Hello everybody. Okay, I'm going to do a little introduction to my next part of my loco project here. Uh, before I do that though, I'll just mention that I've managed to get my axle boxes fitted and I've managed to make my axles up. I've just got to machine the ends of the axles yet. I'm not doing that until I've got all my, machine, uh, my wheels machined up. But just before I move on, I've managed to get me inside my chromity now measure the distance between in between the axles and on each side they're within one to two thousandths and that's important because your connecting rods have got to run uh, smoothly so they don't jam up so if you've done all the rest of your machining like I've shown you in my previous videos with the frames, the own guides and the axle boxes you shouldn't be too far out. Now front to back isn't as important as side to side as long as as long as the opposing sides are equal it doesn't matter in theory it doesn't matter if those are a little bit narrower in width or in length or wider in length because you just make your connecting rods to suit as long as they're the same on both opposing sides I think that's right anyway so moving on to my wheels then uh, I acquired these old wheels that come off a riding car at my local club and a good friend of mine at club said anybody that wanted any on them could have them so I've I've had six off him and uh, I'm going to use these for my wheels the only the only problem is the, the flanges broke but I've measured them up on the tread here on the tread and the tread on these are the diameter as of my flanges if that makes sense so I'm just going to whip them flanges off machine it down to the flange diameter and then put my tread on. The only other thing is they need boring out and bushing to bring them back down to size for my particular axle. Right, so all these wheels have got a recess in them, just for show really, but they all vary. Because the dimensions aren't critical, they all vary. So I'm, I'm going to machine all these recesses up so that they're all the same and I've decided to put a little inset in to make them look as though they cast wheels like that this is my practice wheel I've took the flange off bored it out and bushed it and I've just recessed it to a relevant di diameters and then I'm putting these insets in and I'm going to either rivet them in or bolt them in or whatever but the crank pin has got to fit on on that side anyway now I'm making these insets out of brass and you might think that's a bit of an expensive way to do it well I had this bit of brass tubing on stock which I've had for over 20 years which somebody gave me and it's just the right the OD just needs boring out to make these insets so what I'm doing I'm, I'm boring them out boring it out then I'm parting it off just over one eighth thick to give me enough just a little bit to, to face up once once it's parted off then I'm cutting these angles on just to make it look once it's in that it looks more like a cast wheel I think I've cut them angles at 75 degrees from the uh, vertical center line 75 degrees and then I've just I've just eyeballed it really to make it look you know so it looks pleasing to eye I've got no actual measurements for that so but I think that looks okay so I'll take you over to lathe now and show you how I'm doing these Right, so I'm over in my Harrison lathe now, and uh, I've got I've got this bit of brass stroke bronze tubing set up so that the OD the OD is running uh, true, and that's that's my finished size the OD of that. It's just I think it's three and five eighths diameter. I've bored it out 
to the relevant diameter for me insets, which is an inch and three quarter. And then I've put me uh, my live centre in it because, as you can see, there's quite a distance to part through here. I've got a tool. I've got a tool in, and I just can't quite get through. And I don't want to grind any more off my tool because it's going to make it a little bit too weak down in that bottom, uh, where that where that bottom bit is there, and it's liable to sh to uh, not be rigid enough if I take any more off. So what I'm doing, I'm going in within probably within a sixteenth or an eighth before it drops off, and then I'm just going to I'm just running my axe around it. Then putting it in my other lathe, set my other lathe up then for facing them up. Uh, and I'm machining them off at 0.134, just 1.34 thousandths, just to leave me 10 thou on or so, 9 or 10 thou, to bring them down to 1 eighth thickness. So uh, I'll just show you that running, I'll put camera down. So I've got six of these to make. So it's important when you're doing this sort of parting off that you've got all your slides locked up, your saddle, your tail stock, make sure all that's locked in and make sure your tool, tool's well supported. I'm actually using a, a wider tool than I, I would like to, but if I go any less, it's losing all its rigidity. So I'm having to just go it flow on that one. Right, that's as far as I can get with that tool, so I'm about a sixteenth off of the uh, dropping off point. And I'm just going to nip round with nick, nick it with Axor to get that off. I'll take you over to my fiddle then and uh, show you me facing them up. Also, remember what I said in one of my previous videos when I was making my boiler fittings about all these brass turnings. Take a look back and re remind yourself what I said on them videos. Moved over to Myford now, I've, I'm just setting the first one up in my 3 jaw, so I'm gripping it on the bow and I've only got uh, about 3 30 seconds of an inch to grip on because it's only an eighth thick anyway. So I don't want my jaw sticking through, the uh, protruding through the, the actual flange. Um, I've set it up with my scribing block. As near as I need to, don't need to be done with clock that. Just lightly grip it, then I'll take a few thousandths off. Right, I'm going to start lathe up now. Makes a bit of a racket, but.
I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. I'll just take the burrs off. Right, just got four more to do. And then uh, I'll move back over to the workbench. Okay, just moved off at my field. I've got all my, uh, my inserts done. I'm calling them inserts. Six of. Uh, I've got my template one, which I made first of all here. And I'm just going to simply Put some marking blue on, line them up, mark them all off, and then just cut. I'll, firstly, I'll put a drill just to give me a radius in that corner. Then I'll just cut up with the axe and trim them with files. So that'll be my next job now. I've had enough for today. And then I'm going to move on to the rest of the wheels. I've got to just knock the flange off, bring them down to 4 and 5 eighths OD and then uh, bore them out and bush them to bring them back to 11 sixteenths like I've done this one. Put a bush in, bring them back to 11 sixteenths and then once I've got the all the Holes reamed to the to the size, and they're down to diameter and faced up. I can then make a jig, put a jig in my lathe, drop these into a jig with a nut on, and then uh, machine the tread. And while I've got it in, I can also machine the recess to fit these. So, my next job then is to finish uh, finish off these inserts. Catch you on my next clip then. <laughs>